So here I am to do a quick review of the three motor starting methods that I've reviewed here on my channel. So we've got other videos about each of these and I'll link those in the description below. But I wanna here almost make like a uh, formula sheet to go along with these motor starting methods. So we've talked about part winding, auto transformer, and Y delta starting. Now the purpose of all these starters is to reduce the inrush current. Of course they all have a downfall where they also are going to reduce the torque at start. Now um, with these we'll just do some kind of formulas and quick review on each of them. So with the part winding motor starter what you would expect is you would expect a special motor with this. Now the motor is actually two Y motors wound on top of each other inside the same stator. Right, so when you're looking at a part winding motor or a part winding motor starter, the terminals you're expecting to see are T1, T2, T3. Of course, with four, five, six being the Y point. And then you're expecting to see T7, T8, and T9 inside your terminal or junction box. Now we don't have very clear formulas on this, but there's a couple things that matter. So one thing that matters is your current when you're doing a part winding start is equal to about 60 to 65 percent of your current in a full voltage start right so your full voltage starting current being what would it be if you started that motor with uh, without that part winding starter now I'm just gonna make that a little bit smaller. So the other thing, or the big thing that we really care about here is the overload sizing. So the way a part winding starter works is that it actually is essentially two motor windings in one. So what we have to do is we have to take our full load current divided by two and multiply that by our service factor multiplier. Of course, I have another video all about overload sizing covering the service factor multipliers, which I'll also link below. So now with a uh, auto transformer starter, so that's a part winding starter, terrible torque, it's like 40% at start. They're not very common uh, because of that. With an auto transformer starter, now this can actually be pretty much any motor Right, and how the auto transformer starter works is essentially uses an auto transformer like that to reduce the current to the motor. So a couple things that matter here is we will have the current to the motor and you'll also have the current on the line. So with this, um, because we're using that auto transformer, we're using taps, right? Typically a 65, 80, 50 tap, they can be varying. So there's a couple important values here. The current of the motor at start, right? So this would be using an auto transformer starter is equivalent to the I full voltage start. If you were not using a starter and you started the motor, times whatever tap setting you are using. Now the line current, so I'll do that one here, the line current of the motor, I line at start, right, which is where you would be putting your overcurrent devices, uh, your breakers and your disconnects, things like that. That would actually be your I full voltage start times your tap squared. So we see a double reduction there. And that has to do with the transformer maining, maintaining its KVA in and KVA out. Because our source voltage is now higher, we can get away with a lower current in order to main that, maintain that KVA rating. Now with torque, your torque at start is going to be your torque of a full voltage start, whatever that would be, times your tap squared. Now you do get that double reduction in torque which makes these sometimes difficult to start motors with so sometimes you need to adjust the tap setting that you use so you can get an appropriate starting torque. Now overload sizing 
is normal. There's no change in overload sizing uh, because you're only using this starter, bringing in an auto transformer at start. Once you're running, it's running through a strand standard contactor. Your overload heaters are located in the line. So there's no special considerations to be made there. Moving on to our Y Delta starter. Now I don't want to get too much into this. I do have another video all about changing Y loads to Delta loads, uh, which I can link below as well. Um, but what we see is we see a huge reduction in our current and our torque. And let's talk about that. Now this will be a motor where I have access to all six leads or all six terminals. So I do need access to T1, T4, T5, no, sorry, T2, that's a two, T2, T5, T3, and T6. So I need access to all of those different uh, terminals or leads in my junction box. So I can take the motor and at start, I can configure it in Y and then for run, I configure it in delta. Now my contactors will uh, open, right? It's an open transition starter, open from Y and then close into delta. So what I see here, so what I see is my current at start when I'm using the starter is equal to what would be my full voltage starting current divided by three. So it's actually one third. So I drop by 66.6%, .6%, however you wanna look at it. It's only one third of the starting current required, which is great, right? Huge reduction in inrush current. Unfortunately, what I see is I also see that same reduction in my torque. So my starting torque is what would be my full voltage starting torque divided by three. So I have a big drop in starting torque. So typically these cannot be used to start fully loaded motors. Typically the motors have to be unloaded, start the motor and then start to load the motor up. The biggest trick with a wide Delta starter is our overload sizing. Uh, so when we're sizing our overloads, what we have to remember here, and we'll talk about why in a sec, we're gonna take our FLA divided by square root of three, and then multiply it by our service factor multiplier. Now the thing we have to remember here, why is this the case? The overloads are actually in the phase because of the way that the uh, contactors work. So essentially what we kind of see is something like this. Our overloads are located in the phase inside that delta. Oh, let's say overload. Sorry about my terrible picture here. All right, so if that's my thing, my line current coming in has to split off and go two ways. So that's why I need to divide by that root three to get my delta phase current. Um, anyways, I do hope this helps. I've linked a whole bunch of videos below that will help you go along. But here what we have done is we have assembled a formula sheet that we could use when we are determining current and torque and overloads of our three older style reduced voltage and reduced current starting methods. Uh, so thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, please hit that thumbs up button. If you wanna see more like this, subscribe. Uh, you have yourself an awesome day. Thanks for watching.